So is AI a tool to help us work smarter, not harder, or is it a job-killing replacement for human workers? Financial educator Kyla Scanlon laid out the potential trade-offs in a TikTok video. Take a look. GPT and AI systems are becoming more and more widespread. It's really important to consider both the negative and positive impacts of this technology. Job loss. As AI systems become more advanced, they may be able to handle a wider range of tasks that were previously done by humans. This could result in job loss for some people, particularly those who work in industries that are highly susceptible to automation. Because the chat GPT is an AI system, it doesn't have the same level of understanding or knowledge as a human. This can lead it to provide incorrect or misleading information, which can be detrimental. It can also potentially contribute to feelings of loneliness and isolation. There may be a tendency for people to rely on them for companionship and social interaction. When it comes to creativity, it's a mixed bag. It can be a useful tool for generating ideas and helping people to come up with new and creative solutions to problems, but it could also potentially lead to a decrease in human creativity. As AI systems become more advanced, they can produce a lot of stuff. However, it's important to ensure that the quality of this output is high in order to avoid potential negative impacts such as misinformation. Overall, the use of chat, GPT, and other AI systems has the potential to bring both positive and negative impacts. I have a lot more thoughts on all of this, but this script in particular was written by chat, GPT. And Kyla Scanlon joins me now for more on this. Kyla, this whole thing's so interesting. ChatGPT itself says people who work in industries susceptible to automation could lose their jobs. So what industries are we talking about? It's mostly industries that are considered the laptop class. So industries that require a lot of data analysis or can be easily automated away. They have very clear steps to them. Those are the sorts of jobs that can be impacted heavily by ChatGPT. What do you think that could mean for the economy if entire industries replace their workforce with AI, especially if that change happens quickly? I mean, I think it's something to consider. It's concerning. But like Sam Altman said in that interview that was shown earlier, there's going to be new jobs that come up because of this. AI is more of a complement to humans right now than something that totally replaces them. So if you look at Code Interpreter, which ChatGPT just released the other day, it still needs humans to guide it forward. So humans still need to be a part of the overall puzzle. So I think that's the thing that we have to focus on is how do we integrate AI into our workforce rather than considering it as a replacement for workers. You also say that AI doesn't replace analysts, that it enhances them. Can you explain what you mean by that and give some examples of how that works? Yeah, it's the same sort of idea, right? So AI is really good at outputting things, but it, it doesn't always have the human eye to understand what it's outputting. So humans need to go back and make sure that what AI is outputting makes sense. And that's a big part of data analysis. Like AI can produce a report, but some points might not be clear or coherent. And that's where the human part comes in to make sure that it can be consumed by other humans. Now, the so-called godfather of AI, Dr. Jeffrey Hinton, says that if he were in school today, he wouldn't study computer programming because it's going to be replaced. He says fundamental science, the arts, humanities, those will be the last things to be replaced. Do you agree? And what, what do you think young people should think about when considering a career today? Yeah, I mean, it's really tough. Like humanities degrees have gone down. People are getting them less and less. But I think, you know, personally, they're super important. Ethan Molik, who's a professor at Wharton, said that exposure doesn't mean replacement, but it does mean change. So I think when we think about, you know, what students are majoring in, computer science is still going to be really important and creativity is still going to be really important. So I think it goes back to that point where AI is not necessarily a replacement for computer scientists. It's not necessarily a replacement for creativity, but how can it enhance those things? And Kyla, for someone who's kind of just dipping their toe in, how do you advise people start to learn more about AI and get comfortable with it? Because, you know, initially it can feel like a waste of time. You type in, help me write this thing or help me find this information and it spits out a bunch of irrelevant results and you kind of just want to say, forget it, I'll just write it myself. So how do you kind of get schooled on how to work with the AI? Well, that gets, that's actually an interesting point. Like when we think about jobs in the future, a prompt engineer might be one of those jobs where it's like, how do you actually talk to the AI and make it understand what you're asking? So I think with talking to AI, it just takes a lot of practice. Just like how when we first had social media, it took a lot of practice to understand how we interact with each other in that new online space. So I think that's the biggest thing is just like, you know, asking AI questions, figuring out how it responds to the questions that you're asking. Um, there's different courses that I think you can take online. And like I said, Ethan Moll has a newsletter on this that's really, really good to helping people um, integrate it because it's going to impact everything, you know, classrooms, jobs, um, the way that we live our day-to-day -day lives.
And Kyla, you educate people on the internet. You said it yourself, that video you recorded, you read a script written by ChatGPT. Do you ever worry that AI is gonna take over what you do? Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, worry is sort of uh, pointless, I think, at this point, because we don't know what's going to happen. The speed that AI has grown has been astronomical. I don't think anybody really expected it to get this good this fast. Um, I, you know, I'm more hopeful about it. I think it could be really cool. It's a way to think about humans in a different light. Like, how can we expand the, you know, human consciousness? And AI might be a tool for that. But do I worry about my job? You know, sure. I think everybody's a little bit worried. And, and Kyla, I, I'm out of time, but I just want to ask you one more question. For those who maybe don't see this as a day to day thing they have to use, but they don't want to be left in the dust, where do you think they can go to get comfortable with mm -hmm. it? I mean, I think, yeah, just going into the chat GPT and just talking to it a little bit, you can do recipes in there. You could do workout plans. You could ask it to help you schedule flights. Um, it's really a way to live your life on the day to day. So I think that's the biggest thing is just playing around with it. It's a whole new sandbox for people to interact with. A whole new sandbox. Love that. Kyla Scanlon, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.